These are smooth death veining beetles. Asbolus, Levis. They share the genus with blue death veining beetles and actually occur in the exact same area of the country here in the United States in the Southwest deserts. These particular ones were found in Eastern California. And you can see that like the blue death veining beetles, some of them have a powdery coating and that undoubtedly helps to protect them from the sun. Not all of them have it. It wears off to some degree. These are nocturnal beetles, and so unless they find themselves caught out in the sun after a night of foraging, they mostly don't need it. Normally when the sun comes up, they will find a rock or a piece of wood or more often rodent burrows that have been dug under creosote bushes and other desert plants and hide in there during the heat of day. They're called death feigning beetles and I've only just put them in this tank a few moments ago just for purposes of making the video. They're called death feigning beetles because they play dead. And the reason why this is so effective is because many things in nature, animals, will avoid eating decaying things because they're covered with bacteria and could make them sick. A lot of people think that the beetles are actually dead when their new pets arrive to them, but it's not the case. The blue death feigning beetles play dead a little bit more convincingly because they don't continue to twitch like their sister species here does. And of course it's very comical to our eyes, but they've evolved to be exactly what they are and it has been effective for them. Flip a few more of them over here so that you can get a feel for how they all do it as a species. I don't know if you saw that, but they have a remarkable ability to flip themselves over. Even in fine sand, this species is able to do that. These things are common in areas where fine sand occurs. And one thing that distinguishes them from a closely related species called Asbolus papillosus is the presence, we'll take a close look here, at the tip of the toes, the tarsi, there's a little tuft of hair that pokes out over them. I sort of think of it as being similar to hairy knuckles, and I'll see if I can zoom in here for you a little bit better. Fine little hairs that poke out. Brush the sand off this one. They poke out right on either side of those two little hook-like tarsi there. They're kind of, um, kind of an orange color, and that right there shows it pretty well. And I call these smooth death feigning beetles because they are smooth at the sides. I think papillosis also tends to have small bumps around the margin at the edges of the body there. Like their sister species, Asbolus varicosus, the blue death feigning beetles, you can see a line running right through the middle of the back of this beetle. And those are fused wing covers. They don't actually have wings underneath of, underneath of them. The reason for that, the reason for them being fused is because it helps to retain moisture in their bodies to help prevent them from drying out. 
in the harsh conditions of the deserts where they live in, where annual rainfall is next to none. Very easy to keep in captivity. They survive in the deserts on very little food. And so as pets, it's very easy to keep them by adding in a little bit of dog food, little bits of fruit and vegetable. I will also put some little bits of jelly in there in little lids for them to drink on and eat. And I've only put these ones in this particular cage a few moments ago for the video. And so a lot of them, especially that one there, continuing to play dead, a lot of them are just starting to get comfortable and move around a little bit. But they tend to be very active, and especially in the evening hours. In the natural setting, they would emerge from their burrows and their daytime hideouts to forage at night. They'll walk around on the desert floor looking for food. And they're very thick-shelled. It takes a lot for a predator to take a bite out of them. And of course they're one of the larger things that's moving around on the desert floor. And so food being so scarce for everything in general out there, that thick cuticle, that exoskeleton, is very important to their survival, and also the thickness of it aids in preventing water loss. They'll get most of the liquids that they need through the foods that they eat, and so in the pet tank, it's not necessary to offer them a water dish, although they will take advantage of a drink if the opportunity arises. You can see the eye of this specimen just above where the antenna meets the body up there at the head. A lot of people have trouble finding the eyes. Two little tarsi on each toe hooks, those and the bristles help them to move through the sand and over most any kind of surface. They are, however, incapable of climbing smooth surfaces, and so that means that you don't actually even need to put a lid on the cage in a tank. Now, if your plastic is older and scratched, that sometimes provides a little bit of a foothold for them, and so you have to be aware of that. Very easy to keep, very long-lived. Not uncommon for these beetles to live two, three, four, or more years. It's always hard to tell. These don't breed in captivity. At least nobody has done it yet that I know of. Blue death feigning beetles have been bred in captivity a few times, but these ones are not as frequently available. And so nobody has really tested it out or tried very much. Smooth death feigning beetles. As bolus levis. I like to put little things like this in the tank for them to hide under. That's what they do in nature during the day, and so I like to offer them a similar kind of habitat to what they are familiar with. That twitching. So great. <laughs> 